welcome to Whiskey and Wool. My name is Shannon and I'm coming to you from northern New Jersey where I work and I live and craft. I am going to begin this episode the way I always do, which is with a whiskey chat. I will be filming the whiskey chat after I'm done with the rest of this episode um, because it is late afternoon already here in <laughs> New Jersey. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go right from filming this into doing whiskey chat with you. I hope you enjoy. I'll tell you where to skip to if you are not interested. Hi. I'm gonna do a little whiskey chat with you. Look at my. This is probably the longest he'll ever be on film with, you know, just being on the podcast with me. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Meow. <laughs> uh, okay, this is, I'm gonna just put the camera down slightly. Uh. Yeah, so today, what am I tasting? I am tasting, uh, I am tasting a Teeling Irish whiskey. This is the Brabazon bottling, aged 14 years. Um, I've poured it into my tasting dram. You can see it's a lovely amber color. So many of you have said to me <laughs> privately and sometimes in the comments about um, uh, I've been a little light on the whiskey lately. And it's true. And the reason is because my little tasting bottles, I've really gotten down to some whiskeys that I'm not excited about. Um, I have like maybe six more of these tiny little bottles that are from the advent calendar that I usually get every Christmas. And um, what's left are not Scottish. <laughs> They're not Scotch whiskeys. Um, they are other countries. And there's several rye whiskeys, which I like just fine, but I don't usually like to sip those. I like to mix them in drinks. So yeah, I, that's part of why I've been doing either skipping the chat completely or just doing gin um, instead, which I also really, really love. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what's going on. I have, I was just calculating, I think I have about three or four more episodes left for this year and um, I did get another whiskey advent. So I have some fresh batches of whiskey coming in um so look something to look forward to for all you whiskey lovers that um enjoy this part of my whiskey and wool episodes bi-weekly episodes um anyway let's talk about teeling i'm not a big uh irish whiskey drinker um i prefer scotch whiskey i'm just more familiar with them i guess um but who knows this might end up being quite good so let me tell you a little bit about teeling um, I don't think they're that well known um, in uh, among whiskeys. When you think about Irish whiskeys, probably most people think about um, Bushmills and about Jameson's. Um, Bushmills is in the north and Jameson's is in the south of Ireland. Um, Teeling is in located in Dublin, so it's a south, southern Ireland um, Irish whiskey. The original Teeling distillery dates back to 1782 when uh, Walter Teeling established his distillery in the Liberties area of Dublin. But the original Teeling distillery, like the other um, distilleries in Ireland, closed as a, as a result of dramatic decline in Irish whiskey sales. The number of whiskey distilleries in Ireland collapsed from over 100 in 1886 down to just two in 1970, Bushmills and Jameson's. Um, and this then became the subject of John Teeling's Harvard PhD thesis. So he is the father of um, the two men that are currently running Teeling Distillery. In early 2012, Beam International, owners of Jim Beam and Maker's Mark Whiskey, bought the distillery that the Teeling uh, family had established. 
And uh, by then, the brothers, Jack and Stephen Teeling, were working with their father. So they were involved in the negotiations. And they negotiated with Bean to sell them 16 thousand casks of their own whiskey <laughs> and then they took that and created um, the whiskey company Teeling. Uh, the first run from of their whiskey from their new Dublin distillery flowed in March of 2015. Brand is fairly broad. They have uh, a lot of small batch whiskeys. They um, they will use corn in it, so that's something that Scot Scottish whiskeys, single malts anyway, are usually always barley. Um, so they will use corn or some other grain to impart some caramel or toffee flavors. Um, they will use rum casks, they'll use ex-bourbon casks, um, port casks. They have a variety of different uh, casks that they will do the aging in. Uh, they also have some vintage um, reserve collections, uh, some 24-year. They have um, some blended whiskeys. They also have peated single malt whiskeys that they call Black Pits, which looks, looks pretty cool. Uh, kind of upstart, I guess, in the Irish whiskey market. That might be a good way to, to put it. Okay, so the Teeling whiskey that I'm teaching or tasting teaching teaching I guess I am teaching um, that I'm tasting today is the Teeling Bra Bazan number three so it's the third in the series there was a one two and three I don't know if you can get it anymore but there may be a four that's about to come out um, the bottlings were limited to 10,000 bottles and uh, it came out at some point I think I want to say early last year and um, it is bottled, it's made out of 100% barley. Um, it is bottled, or sorry, aged in uh, sherry casks from Spain, the uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry. So right away, we can guess, because it's a dessert wine, that this is going to be a sweet, and perhaps rich tasting whiskey. It's probably going to be like fruit cake in a glass. So this will be like a really good one for uh, for the holidays, for example, like for this time of year when you want sort of those spicy and fruity flavors. So that would be my guess about what, and just looking at what it's bottled or what it was aged in, and the aging process. Apparently, it spends up to three years in the ex sherry casks it starts its life in a bourbon cask so that would impart um, more sugary flavors as well so this should be a pretty rich sweet whiskey I'm excited to try it um, I have as I always do um, splashed a little bit of water in there just a few drops just to help open up the flavors and cut the burn of the alcohol that can happen um, when you just pour directly from the bottle into your glass without diluting it at all. Um, you can dilute just F, just for your own um, knowledge. Like you, you can put as much, there's no rule, you can put as much water in there as you want, um, whatever it you need in order to help you taste um, the tastes that are there. So there's no wrong amount of water, um, but you should have at least a couple drops. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, I smell lots of fruit. It's, it's like, it is like a fruit bowl. I smell banana, plum, some spice, cloves, cinnamon. Maybe even a little apple. It almost smells like apple pie <laughs> with a little bit of banana. <laughs> it's like a fruit cocktail in a glass. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is really spicy. This has to be one of the spiciest whiskeys I've ever tasted. This is really like banana with a whole bunch of cinnamon on it. 
that's what it tastes like. Wow. And even at the end, that's really, there's, that's a, there's a strong taste of, yeah, like a caramelized banana. That's, that's what this is. <laughs> I'm sure there's more to it. There's a very sweet taste up front that I would classify as like caramel or toffee. And then you get the sugary, fruity flavors and then the spicy burn at the end. Okay, that's what I see. Let me tell you what, is this the, yeah, let me first tell you what the, um, what the distillery says and then we'll look at what um, some experts have to say about it. Okay, um, single malts generally, they don't really have anything about um, this one. So let me jump over to the, the professional review. Okay, on the nose, fruitcake, plum pudding, a good dollop of brandy butter, baked apples, plum marmalade, roasted almonds and sultans, sultanas kick in. Um, there's a green note at the end that this um, reviewer is saying that they can't quite put their finger on. It could be sage. Hmm. I don't know there's enough going on in there plum apple i s smell banana and banana usually comes from rum casks so and there weren't any rum casks involved in this okay oh the mouth here feels luxurious it's nice oily almost buttery in texture on your tongue it feels like eating a square soft caramel lightly salted and wonderfully sweet orchard fruits so orchard fruits like apples um, plums, peaches, drenched in sweet toffee and dark, dark chocolate biscuit cake, sultanas, and plums. There's an element which reminds me of fresh baked apple pie. Um, you need to sit with this whiskey and let it roll around in your mouth. Bar, bar, <laughs> bra, I can't say it. Brabazon 3 is an Irish whiskey to savor. It evolves as you taste each drop, dark cloves, sweet figs and spicy notes of nutmeg and dried plum. The salty caramel note reminds me of tasting bean and goose dark salted chocolate. So I didn't really taste the chocolate, but I find chocolate's kind of an elusive flavor at times. Hmm. It's interesting that he talks about the texture. This is so spicy though. Like that, I know I said it before, but wow. If you like spicy, like um, like that pumpkin pie spice kind of tastes, minus the pumpkin, whiskey instead, this is for you. Like you would like this. This is this has got a lot of spice. Cloves is a good way to say it. Cloves and cinnamon, nutmeg, those apple pie, pumpkin pie spices. The finish is uh, orchard fruit flavors dissipate with into toasted brown sugar, dark berries, and cinnamon. The finish is medium to long. Dark fruits fade sweetly, then dries out quickly. Like a sweet, ripe grape in the summer sun, it's gone too soon. Ah, All right, well, there you have it. That is our whiskey chat for today. I hope you get a chance to enjoy a wee dram of your own and slanta. <music> northern New Jersey <laughs> where I work and live and craft um, it is peak leaf season right now um, it's this is always when we usually we usually have peak leaves I think the difference this year is that it's been a little drier like a little less rain and usually like the rain will come we'll get a couple really pounding rainstorms that'll come and like make all the leaves fall all the ones that are loose just fall more quickly 
Um, so it's, yeah, it's really spectacular. I have a ton of footage. I, you probably saw some coming into this video. Um, hope you enjoy seeing it. I don't know what the heck I'm going to film, um, after the leaves fall. I guess I'll find, there'll be some pretty snow pictures at some point. I just don't know when. Um, yeah, so I, just to finish up a little bit, my um, walks around the garden with the cat have ended, just because it's too cold um, for either of us to be out there. He's a house cat, um, so he doesn't ever get a winter coat. Um, and uh, the last on the last walk we went on, which was about 10 days ago now, he got a tick. So I freaked out. I was just like, I know it's tick season, so we're done. Um, yeah, so those two things together. Ooh, ticks are gross. We got it out. It's fine. It wasn't a deer tick. Um, well, so welcome. You didn't come to hear about my cat's ticks or <laughs> the weather you came for. Um, knitting and spinning and yarny content. Um, I think that's all I have today is knitting and spinning. I don't have any other crochet or anything. I want to just catch you up on where I am with my crafting. And um, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think for my crafting, I'm on the verge of um, making a turn into some new projects. I'm sort of wrapping up a lot of ongoing projects. Um, one of them is what I have on right now. This is Spots Sweater by Ann Vinzel. I finished it. I, yeah, I don't, I love the way it looks. I wish I had more positive ease than I have. Like, it's pretty snug. I probably have about two or three inches of positive ease in there, maybe four of positive ease. And it's just, for the thickness of the sweater, it's not enough for, I don't, I'm not incredibly comfortable. Um, I wish I did it a little, I wish I went a size up. I ended up, so I'll give you the full story of this sweater. I haven't, I've been working on it for a long while and I probably haven't done the entire story since I first started knitting it. Uh, so I used this gorgeous yarn by Camilla Fiber Company in the colorway, oh my gosh, it just went out of my head, but I'll put it on screen. Um, I used a strand of this Merino sport weight and a strand of mohair, same colorway, clay dust. That's what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I bought a sweater's quantity of these two with the idea that I would hold them together. This is all I have left, by the way. Um, so did pretty good with the sweater's quantity. Um, and the contrast color is this uh, Corydale Sea Cell Blend from uh, Countess of Blaze. And it's hand spun. So it's some very early hand spun that I did. I had bought enough to make a sweater and um, spun it and it, I was not very good at spinning at that point. I was learning still and it came out a little ropey, a little stiff and it didn't really have desire to knit it into a whole sweater but work, I think in color work it's fine. I don't think that um, you really see that ropey texture or feel it with um, so many other strands all together. Um, there was some color changing that happened naturally in the in the yarn and the fiber had a significant amount of pale blue and some sort of like sea green color in it so you get a little bit of that color change which I really really love um, and I think this sweater would look great on someone who wasn't as full in the bust as I am and maybe a little smaller. <laughs> I think it would look great if it were a little baggy. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I'll wear it. I may end up just gifting it to someone who's a little smaller than me um, because it would probably look really great on, yeah, like my one son significant other It'd probably look amazing on her because she's very small and it would look very oversized on her. Anyway, I'll pop a picture in here of me. I took a little earlier today um, of me wearing it uh, so you can get the idea. Uh, it's not really cropped, but yeah, I don't know. 
not really digging it. Um, but whatever. It's off the needles, and that is good news. And uh, I did, I do really love the design. I like the pattern, the stitch pattern in the design. I think, yeah, I just think if I knit it a bigger size, I would like it a lot better. All right, moving on. Okay, um, moving on to whips. I, uh, yeah, I have made progress on my Christmas shifty. I really, really like this. This p stitch pattern, if you're gonna knit it, really grows a lot in blocking, especially I've used Superwash. Um, and yeah, I've got the sleeve started. So Superwash, um, as you may know, if you're a, a, a knitter who uses Superwash, it grows a lot in blocking. Um, so this stitch pattern grows even more, so it should really kind of stretch out like that. So that you really, instead of seeing so much texture, you'll see like each individual little square. Um, yeah, this is... Let me go through the yarns. They're in the pattern in my project bag. Um, this is a Christmas project bag from the Fat Squirrel um, from last year. I don't think she's done her Christmas bags yet. I think she's planning to do her Christmas bags for this year very soon. So yeah, if you want one, she's definitely one to watch. Um, she announces her project bag updates on her YouTube channel and uh, maybe on YouTube, I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe on Instagram, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Clearly a little distracted right now. Um, okay, so the Christmas sweater is made out of some BFL nylon from Stranded Dye Works in the colorway patisserie. That is the main color, this like very beautiful sort of um, pale, like creamy pink color with gold and brown speckles. I did buy three skeins, so I have one more full skein and uh, I'll probably need a little bit of it to finish off the sleeves. This and um, My second um, color that I'm using in there is Christmas is Cancelled also by Stranded Dye Works. Made, uh, Stranded made this last year. And uh, the Christmas colorway this year is called Popcorn Garland. It's beautiful. Um, I don't know if you can get it anymore. There was a pre-order. Uh, I didn't get any because I'm still working my way through these Christmas colors that I have. I have another like more vibrant Christmas color. This is from Lavender Loon. And this is called Holly Drama. And this is old. I've had this a few years. Um, I ended up using, alternating these two reds where I really probably could have just held on to this. I don't know why. I made these decisions last year. This Christmas sweater started, I started it last year right around this time. Um, and I never finished it. So I put it away for, um, for the year, for the, you know, and to bring it out again in late summer, early fall to finish it up. So I should have it done in the next week or so. Um, sleeves generally don't take me too long. And last, this color here is by Garn Story and it is the colorway Grinch. So I'm using all Christmas colors except patisserie, which really isn't a Christmas color. I think it's a regular color in the Stranded Dye Works line. So yeah, I'm so happy that this is moving along. I actually, kind of getting an itch to cast on some new stuff just because this is done. This is nearly done. And I have a couple other projects that I'm I'm working on that I'm wrapping up, so. All right, continuing on with my whips. I do have some other FOs, but I'm gonna show you that together um, in a few minutes. So this is kind of a complicated whip. This is the Stephen West Shawlography Make Along. At the end of October, Stephen said that we could go ahead and show it without being worried about spoiling. But in case you're 
kind of behind and you don't want to be spoiled, I'll tell you where to skip to because, yeah, I would hate to be spoiled if I didn't want to be. I'm all the way through clue three. I haven't started clue four and I want to talk about that. Um, so yeah, if, up through clue three. <laughs> Let me show you. Oy vey. Um, this shawl, here we go. Here's my shawl. Clue three completely done. These are like all my colors all at once. <laughs> um, all right. I'll, I'll tell you about the yarn and then I'll tell you about my struggles. Uh, I'm struggling with the clue four with the look of it. Um, and I've yeah been thinking a lot about what to do. Um, okay, one by one. The creamy white is Stress Knits. I use two of her whites. This is called Over Coffee and the other one is called I Smell Snow. They, they were 50 gram, were they 50 grams? Yes, 50 gram skeins that she had um, put in her shop summer 20. So 2020, I don't know if she does that regularly. I was stalking her and saw that she was having a shop update and they were gonna be 50 grams and I thought that was really cool, a nice way to kind of sample. So I bought like six skeins of random colors that I was interested in seeing up close. And yeah, so I ended up using both of them. They were very, very similar. Um, they both were creamy with like um, pops of pale blue turquoise in them. This one over coffee has also like kind of a mauvey color in it where the I Smell Snow had has black speckles. So I switched, I ended up, I used up all of I Smell Snow probably uh, through up to the mesh. I think the mesh down is um the other color over coffee the gold and the blue the turquoise are vita lifestyle this is lemongrass and this is spa day and then the speckly green is stitched together studio it's called twinkle twinkle baby this is a christmas colorway from last year from december 20 and last is this purpley red, um, red violet that is by Chelsea Yarns and it is the colorway Megan. It's a club color from her chicken club. I only bought one chicken club from her. There, It's a mystery club that she does, um, a skein of yarn inspired by uh, one of her chickens. And I think she's been doing it all year. I just did this one. This was like the March club and it was, um, two skeins based on two chickens that are named Megan and Deegan, and that was the Megan colorway, which I just thought it worked really well together um, with my other colors. And I'm super happy with the way the shawl looks right now. Um, so I am contemplating either binding it off as it is now and not doing the vertical stripe border, because it's actually pretty big and it's gonna grow more when I block it, or I, so I've been looking at on um, Instagram and looking at people's variations because there's a lot of people who don't like the vertical stripe border that Steven designed. It's actually kind of a diagonal stripe border. And the first variation I saw was someone who had let their edges be scalloped and she wrote the directions as to how she did that. I thought that was cool. It, it, was, a, it was a little more interesting. <laughs> but the person who really swayed me, really influenced me, was Millie of Tribe Yarns. I just adore her. She is, she's such a cool woman. Like, she's just got such an awesome vibe. I, yeah, I have a total girl crush on her. <laughs> and her version of this, she did only three colors instead of five and she used beads in some places. I mean, it's really just a work of art, her piece. And she did a different type of border, a textured border, and she added fringe, and it is spectacular. Um, I don't know if I have that much um, 
incentive to do all of that. But what I'm thinking I'm going to do, because there's so much going on in this shawl already, I think it would be really interesting to repeat a motif. So I think I'm going to, on the border, repeat this motif right here. Um, and then I think what I'll do is use the turquoise yarn on top as the V and then stripe the other four colors underneath and then bind off with an I-cord bind off. Um, and then just call it done. Because that'll give me, if I do four rows of that, it'll give me like, the, the shawl will be the size that it was intended to be, I think, um, without that extra element of diagonal stripes when there's already so much going on. I think my favorite part of this shawl actually is this part right here. I just think this looks so good. It could have, we could have kept going with that or brought that element back in at some point and it just would have looked so, so good in my view. Like maybe here, maybe this section could have been more of that, <laughs> more of those layers. Um, mine actually, so other people's will look more contrasty. This ended up being the turquoise and the um, speckly green color um, alternating and it's really di hard to differentiate between those two colors when they're laying together like this. I mean they're laying next to each other here and I think you can really see the difference. I see. Yeah, you can see it right there but it's harder to see here. In fact, I messed up. There were times that I didn't change because it was kind of dark in the, at night when I was knitting and um, I couldn't, I was busy watching a show or whatever and I just didn't alternate as well as I should have. I could have just used all one color. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with this. I, I think I'm gonna go ahead with that textured stitch border. Um, and then just call it done. I have plenty of yarn left. That's the other thing. Like, I really struggle with having extra yarn, but I'm getting better about accepting <laughs> that extra yarn. Just kind of goes with the territory of knitting um, because, you know, you're just always going to have some extra yarn. And there's scrappy projects out there that you can use that stuff in. Maybe I just have to do better finding those scrappy projects. <laughs> I actually saw, I forget what video I was watching. Oh, I think I was watching a Christy Glass interview in of a yarn shop and they had a scrappy crochet basket, which I was just like, I need the pattern for that. So one of these, when I'm in scrapping craft mode, I'll be looking for those. All right, I just have one more whip and I don't really, I'm not really that far. Sorry, I have to really reach for it. I'm not that much further along on it than I was. I am working on some socks and um, they're meant to be a gradient, but I don't really think they're that much of a gradient. This works, but this is more, a little more jarring. Um, this is just one, the first sock. Um, it is the Drea Renee everyday sock pattern with a flegal heel and you knit toe up. Um, yeah, this has been like kind of my throw in my bag and uh, take it with me knit, but um, I don't know, I've been a little bored with it. It's no fault of the yarn, the yarn is beautiful. The yarn is, oh, I don't have the tag out. Oh, here it is, it's in here. All of, <laughs> it was a six skein, mini skein set from Wooly Mammoth. Wooly Mammoth Fiber Company. She is a natural dyer in Northern Ireland. And yeah, I ended up with six a six skein set and they're supposed to all kind of go together. And I thought it would be fun to make um, these like color block socks. And um, yeah, using three skeins. So I'll, I'm gonna knit this with this um, creamy color skein until um, I'm down to 10 grams and then I'll probably bind off or I don't know, I'll have to see. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm kind of bored with these, but I'll finish them, I'll finish them. I think that's usually what happens to me when I'm knitting socks, I just get bored. I'd been, what I found was I was taking them with me and then I wasn't knitting. 
because I just wasn't that interested. So I swapped them out for this next project that I'm going to show you. Um, I have an update on my stockings. So I have a clip that I filmed when some of the yarn, when I was kind of in planning mode. Um, and then I'm going to give you an update on what's happening with the knitting part of that. I just got a shipment of Loopy Mango <laughs> for my stocking development. And uh, yeah, so actually some of this I already had. I had, I had these dark green. This is army green. And I bought this brighter green edamame at Rhinebeck. Um, and I had, I had some, I had the red. I actually think I have one more skein of red. Oh, no, I don't. I used it. <laughs> I had three. So now I have one and a half. So I have enough for a red stocking, enough for a, another flamingo stocking now, enough for a pink stocking, a dark red this red this is so beautiful I think it's called Bordeaux yeah yes um this is dark green or sort of a traditional Christmas green and a bright green so those so how many is that I have enough for six so I was gonna just go through with you the um the different accent color combos. So my initial thought was to put this bright pink with the burgundy, with the Bordeaux. I think that's really gorgeous. Um, I am missing, I have two beautiful novelty yarns that are coming and they're not here. And I think one of them, which is kind of a rainbow, will go with this um, more you know, sort of olive toned green. Uh, of course I have white and white will look great with anything. So I think white might end up being with the edamame. Um, I have a little dab of this sort of mauvey, warmer toned, um, dusty rose color. So I could put it there. I don't think it's going to make sense anywhere. Okay. I have this. So my thought was I would either put it with Flamingo, which I think, I don't know if that's going to be too busy, a tweed with a, so I picked up the, that's why I bought the bubble gum pink. This is called bubble gum. Um, I thought it would be a little brighter than it is. It's a little bit more toned down. I thought it would be a little more keyed up than it is, but, um, but I think it'll look great. So I think that is a winner. So I think I'm good with these and this, and that'll have the rainbow. I also have like kind of a textured warm and like orange and pinks that I think could go well with the red. Um, which leaves this, so maybe this, I mean, this could go with this. That would be more subtle. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. So at least I have a little direction, I think. I could also use the hot pink with the flamingo like I did for my daughter-in-law. This would look great. I know this looks good. Um, and just do a different motif. So I'm not necessarily duplicating her, <laughs> but yeah, that is my, that is, this is my process of trying to, um, go through that. I do have, or pick my colors. I do have this like little bag of bulky scrappy yarns, like little minis that I could use, um, you know, here or there as needed. I ended up using a solid green, which I don't think I have anymore for my granddaughter. Um, it looked really great. But yeah, I don't know. I'll play with that. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. I, um, last time I had the Polar Rare uh, stocking nearly done. I just hadn't added on the frills and the pom-pom, so I've done that now. I just ended up using creamy white and I put a 
strand of gold metallic in there and then just sewed on these little felt balls. Um, so yeah, this, just to recap, this is for my, my son who is a daddy and uh, it says Pappy on the top. Um, the pattern is a new pattern that I will be publishing in the next week to two weeks. I hope to have it published by next Sunday, which is eight, which is, what date is that? That is the 15th, 14th. That would actually be pretty cool because November 14th is my son's birthday. Um, so it'd be kind of cool to publish the pattern for his stocking on his birthday. Um, yeah, so this is one um, design. Just to recap, I had knit one for my daughter-in-law, which says mommy in Spanish, and it's got a tree. So this is these are two of the designs that'll be in the same pattern. In that same pattern, I will be also including a stag. So this is a new, a new design, first time you're seeing it. I really love this one. The stag is just spectacular. I ended up using, um, this is all loopy mango yarn, by the way, which I told, I told you in the clip. This is the Bordeaux colorway with spicy hot pink. I didn't add any metallic. I just used the pink on its own and there are some pink pom-poms attached. Love this one so much. And then I also finished the Sparkle Man. <laughs> this is just so crazy. It's it's supposed to be a snowman design, but it um, it's sparkle yarn, so it's a Sparkle Man. And for some reason, this is, the row count is fine. It's just, I think it might be the gold, um, the novelty yarn um, that I ended up using for this that made it a little bit bigger because this guy is a little bit bigger than these. There you can see. But the row count and everything is exactly the same. Um, yeah, so, and that's what the back looks like. I just love this one. Um, but what I, I will do for the pattern, I'm going to knit a swatch with just the snowman in white um, yarn, just with no novelty addition so that you can really see what the snowman looks like in case you don't want to use, in case you want a snowman, not a sparkle man. I do really love the sparkle man though. Oh my gosh, I love these so, so much. Um, I have two green patterns or, you know, stockings planned as well. So just, um, so I'm a little frustrated actually because I ordered some beautiful rainbow novelty yarn, like rainbow slubby novelty yarn, and it hasn't come yet. I ordered it about eight weeks ago and... I'm to the point now where I, I'm just gonna publish the pattern without a sample knit in that. And that pattern is for the bunny rabbit. This is a, um, a different yarn. This isn't the loopy mango. Um, this, it, it knit up into a little bit bigger stitch count. Um, the gauge is a little bit different than the loopy mango. Um, but what I'm going to do, I think, with the bunny rabbit is, um, just so you can see the whole thing here, I'll lean back. I'm going to um, do the same thing that I'm going to do with the snowman. I'm just going to knit a square with the rabbit and then um, down the road when that yarn finally arrives, I will... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll knit a stocking at that point. I'm planning to use the deeper green, that army green color. It's called army green um, for that. And the bright green, I ended up doing the tree. I'll put a picture in here. It's I finished it, but it's wet. Um, so it's over on the blocking mats, but I'll put a picture in here so you can see what the what that looks like. So those will be the, um, the five motifs. Tree, polar bear, stag, snowman, smark, sparkle man, and rabbit. 
Um, I was going to do a deer and silhouette, but I, I've run, I'm run out of time. So, and five designs I think is plenty. Um, yeah, so I hope you're excited about that. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in knitting those, they take, each stocking takes a uh, skein and a half of the main color and then maybe a quarter of a skein for the contrast color. You could very definitely do a plan where you um, bought two skeins of several, like kind of what I did, like I had in front of me enough yarn for six stockings, but I could mix and match the contrast colors. Or you can, you know, plan to buy two and plus one for each stocking if you wanted and, and maybe overlap a little bit. So yeah, that is the update on that. I'll probably just talk about these one more time um, in my next episode. Um, and I'll be um, posting pictures and things of the pattern launch. Um, <laughs> there, that color palette. I'm looking at it on the ground and I'm looking at it on the ground and it's very much missing its greens. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I actually have, so I'll end up, I'm shipping two off. I've got three done. I'll have a fourth done. So it'll, I'll have the Bordeaux, the pink, um, the bright green, the edamame green, and the army green. And then I have enough yarn to knit a one in the speckle that I knit my um, daughter-in-law's in. And then one in the red, which I'll... Um, yeah, I don't know which designs I'll do exactly. But what I realized with this one is that, that I have enough of this to be the contrast color. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll end up doing... I might do the bear in this on this um, just for just for fun so then I'll end up with like a collection of each design yeah okay yeah so that is is that all my knitting I think that might be all my knitting it is wow it's not gonna be very long today famous last words <laughs> I do have a little bit of spinning so I'm gonna just show you a clip right here of some of a spinning project that I worked on this week. I wanted to share, I want to share a spinning project that I'm working on right now. I am um, doing an experiment where I hopefully will come up with a sort of rainbow-esque um, slubby yarn. So my intention is to make it a three ply. Um, two of the plies will be very thin, what would normally um, ply into um, a fingering weight. So this is a very, very thin white. I hope you can see that it's white, natural uh, merino. And then my other uh, single ply thin is white with little bits of color here and there, pink and turquoise, and I think there's some orange. That's two plies. The third ply is still on my spinning wheel. And it is a thick um, strand that has these tufts of color in it. And so it's, it's kind of like a thick, thin scenario. And these are, so this is um, fleece. I had little like 15 or 20 gram um, chunks of fleece that was from my advent calendar last year, my fleece advent calendar, fiber advent calendar, if you will. So I just kind of pulled out a group of colors that sort of follow a rainbow pattern. There weren't, unfortunately, a lot of bright yellows or oranges, but there is this really electric pink, so I'm hoping that will <laughs> work out. So the strategy is to tear the fiber into little tufts like this and then just spin these into um, the white fleece every you know six or eight inches and I'm trying to go in order of the way that they're here so we'll see what happens okay here's the finished <laughs> skein I think it came out really great um, I did so it's about 50 yards. I wasn't looking to make a certain amount of yardage. It was more just, will this 
will this work? Will this idea work? And I think it worked pretty well. I don't know if, you know, if I had my druthers, if these are the colors I would have put together. I do wish there were some warmer tones in there, like a yellow, a bright yellow, or um, even orange would be really great in there. And I think the green was a little more washed out once I pulled it out of, um, you know, in, in chunks. It washed out more than I expected. Um, actually, they all kind of did. This this red violet is the only one that really, you know, maintained its vibrance, and the purple. But yeah, this is uh, this is pretty interesting. I think one of the things that just if you're a spinner and you're interested in this process, I when I was doing the thick thin portions of the thicker yarn, um, there were moments where the yarn wasn't going um, into the orifice fast enough. So I ended up with some stretches that are a little bit over twisted. And even in the soak, they didn't soak out completely. They mostly soaked out. But I think if I were to do this, the, this again, I think the thick thin, um, the chunky thick thin yarn, probably I should use uh, my jumbo flyer and my jumbo um bobbin so that there's a little more space for the yarn to twist um, and then I can increase the uptake a little bit easier because it was struggling a little bit with the thick and thin um, with the thick parts that were coming through but generally I think it's pretty cool I think it's a, it was it was a fun spin to do um, I had read about it in uh, this book right here which I know, I'm sure you can't read it but it's the spinner's book of yarn design um, so it had a, a thick, thin slub yarn, um, recipe, so to speak in there that I just decided to try. I think what I want to do is, um, make an all white version and I, cause I have some white fleece from Classy Squid Fiber Company. I don't know if she makes fiber anymore. I don't know if she's in business anymore. Um, Anyway, I had purchased some white fleece that was called All the Mirrors of the World, and it has like a bunch of different colors of sparkle in it. And I thought that might be fun to do as a slubby yarn to knit into a blanket, a throw with some of my knit collage yarn. So that's that's where I'm what I'm thinking. Um, so I don't know whether that'll be something that I'll spin next or what. But uh, yeah, this was a fun project. What I may do with this actually, now that I have this sample, is I may end up using it for uh, the bunny. Because for this, like I might do this combo, which I think would look quite nice. Because the rainbow yarn that I ordered still isn't here and I don't know when it's coming. Um, and I mean, the, the owner of the shop had um, some medical issues and I'm, you know, nothing, nothing against, I mean, things happen and of course it's totally fine. It's just in this case, I have a deadline <laughs> and I really need to get this pattern published um, in, in the next week or two at the most because it is time. People are buying my other stocking patterns and, um, the, the stocking patterns that are companions to this made out of this um, very chunky yarn. I need to get this one published um, or I'm, it's, you know, no one will buy it until next year this time. So I need to jump on that. I'm just drinking some mineral water with ice. So good, so refreshing. I have another, um, oh, I have another spin project that I completed. Um, this is a two ply that I spun out of Kim Dye's yarn, Polworth silk. This is so pretty. Um, I'm just gonna drop all those so you can see it up close. It's a, sort of a buff tone with all these beautiful colors in it. So like a turquoise and blue and purple and gold and brown. It's really, really beautiful yarn. Um, I ended up with about 900 yards, which is 
pretty much a sweater's quantity, especially if I put it with something else, like some other, like do some color work or something. It's the Colorway Prairie. I don't know if she makes this regularly or not. Um, I bought it last year in 2020. Um, it was like a pandemic purchase and just got around to spinning it now. That is my spinning. I have a little bit of stash to share with you. I'm going to show you a clip. I thought I would show you the 13 day countdown calendar that I got from Stitch Together Studio. This is day one over here and it goes across to uh, day 13. So you begin on October 19th and uh, this is now November 1st. So I've opened them all up. It's funny, she called it a fade, which I guess it could be. I, yeah, maybe these two, these two are so similar. Um, I, I'm saying maybe these two do kind of go together, but these two are so similar. I really thought that you could pull one of them out. And then this is a little bit of an awkward tra um, transition to me. It's almost like this is one set and this is another. <laughs> but anyway, it was a fun calendar. I also just want to say I love how we have collectively decided in the last like 15 or 20 years that green, orange, and purple and black are the Halloween colors. So just love it. It looks so nice. It's so pretty. There's some really, really cool minis in here with like really great colors that really by themselves are not all that Halloween. I mean, look at this one. This was day 31. It is so pretty. So yeah. I think that's all I have for you today. I, um, yeah, I've been pretty efficient, I think, with my knitting. I've been really resisting picking up new projects um, because I just want to get things off the needles at this point. Like I really want this off the needles. I really want the shawl done. Um, I'm glad I had this chat with you today because <laughs> it really helped me decide that what to do with that with that border. You know, I'm glad I didn't jump on doing the stripe pattern right away. It wasn't because it wasn't for any other reason other than I just wanted to get this sweater done. Like, so once the clue was came out and I saw it, I was like, okay, I don't need to get on that right now. But I really wanted to get those stockings done. I wanted to get this sweater done. I wanted to get this down to this point this week. So, and I was able to do all of that. And in the meantime, I just was really chewing on some of the, some of the things. Um, I, I don't have any lifestyle to share. I, yeah, just really, yeah, there'll be more next time. I just didn't have anything, so. Well, thank you for coming around and listening and hanging out with me today. And I hope you enjoyed this um, rather short episode. And I will see you again next time. Hope you stay well. Stay healthy. Bye.